Let's pray and we're going to uh, continue talking about Elijah this morning. God, we love you and we thank you so much uh, for the gift of this day. Uh, Lord, again, we just uh, ask for your help as we steward this gift and uh, make the most of it. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of serving here in this amazing uh, community, serving these amazing students. And uh, Lord, we just ask you to help each of us to make a difference this day. And as we do begin SCW tomorrow, we just pray, Lord, that your hand would be upon this event. That God, it would not just be another event on our calendar, but it would truly be uh, a, a life-changing moment for many of these students. It would be it would be a time where they connect or reconnect with you uh, in a powerful and a meaningful way, and you do a deep, deep work in their lives. Lord, we love you, and we thank you. Uh, we thank you for that in your strong and mighty name. Amen. Today we're uh, shifting, shifting gears a little bit with Elijah, and uh, we've talked the first four weeks of this CU time on uh, Elijah's prayer life and learned some lessons from, from his prayer life. And today uh, we're going to talk about cultivating intimacy with, with God. Um, I want to remind you of our, our theme verse from James 5, Elijah was a man just like us. Prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And any time I read about Elijah, I like to keep that in mind. He was, he was a person just like me and you. Uh, if it was in the day of, of pants, he would put his pants on one leg at a time as well, right? Um, <clears throat> he, was, he was just like us. Uh, so as we, read, as we read these different stories about Elijah, let's, let's be reminded of that. Um, Elijah's name literally means, my God is Jehovah. My God is, is Jehovah. Um, and I wanted, wanted to share that with you because um, today we're going to look at, at a story in 1 Kings 17. Um, and, and it starts with confrontation he had with Ahab, uh, where he said, um, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives whom I serve. There will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. So, so here is Elijah who is standing before the king, this, this man whose name means my God is Jehovah. And he's, he's looking at this, at this king who has made it his mission to build all of these idols in Israel, right? All of these these stone altars to these to these gods and 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 uh, literally if if there was ever a, a person who who um, you wanted to put a picture of someone who served a dead god it would be Ahab right he had built all these altars these asher poles these these things that had no life to them that that was his religion that's what he did and Elijah stands before him. My God is Jehovah stands before him. And he, and, he, and he stands before him with this line. My God is Jehovah. This is where I'm from. And my God lives. It's easy to just read over that part. But he's saying, hey, the God I serve, the God Jehovah, he's different than these idols you've been assembling. He's different than these idols you've been erecting all over the land. He's different. He lives. He lives. And, and I'm about to show you how powerful He is because there is no idol that you could build that could do what my God is about to do in this land. He says, for the next three and a half years, there will be no dew nor rain except at my word. He throws down the gauntlet, right? And, and you would think in this moment, I mean, just think about the implications of that in, in that day. No rain. I, I, I mean, I think the, the only way we could probably understand that, that would be like someone saying to us in this day of that is so technologically driven, hey, for the next three and a half years, all power's being cut off. Like, you're not going to be able to, to get in a car. You're not going to be able to get money out of the bank. You're, you're basically, if you could imagine everything that would be shut down in our lives if, if there was no power. Uh, I, I, I mean, this world as we know it would come to a halt, 
right? It, it would be devastating. We, we lived, we lived in, in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, uh, for a number of years. And there was a, there was a period where uh, a pipeline that, that Nashville basically got all of its gas from, uh, something happened to it and it was shut down. There was already a gas shortage in the south, southern part of the United States, but this particular pipeline was really, uh, something was really messed up with it. Anyway, there was like a week period where there was a serious gas shortage in, in Nashville. The town went crazy. I, I mean, literally, you couldn't pass a gas station without there being a line of cars down the street, and most of the time, it had a sign on it that said out of fuel, but cars were still lined up just hoping that a truck would come in while they were there. There were, there were fights, people were arrested, people were shot, and it was just like a four or five day period without gasoline. Could you imagine what would happen in a three and a half year period without technology, which is how we do business, which is really how we, we get everything from, from our gasoline that runs our, our vehicles to our money out of the bank, how we do business with our, with our credit cards, how we do business, I mean, it, how we communicate with one another. It would be, it would be a disaster, right? Well, this is, this is the equivalent in, in uh, this agricultural-driven society that, that it would have been in Elijah's day. Literally, for three and a half years, a drought would have brought things to a standstill. I mean, this, this would have been a bad deal. People would have been dying. Uh, it would have been the hardest of hard times that you could imagine. And you would think, he throws down the gauntlet like this. Uh, this, this would be a time that God was just going to raise him up. He was going to stand strong in this country and just be sort of this monument of God's, God's power. But no, God, God does something crazy in this moment. He sends Elijah into hiding. So he throws down this gauntlet, this incredible, this incredible prophetic word to Ahab, and then God says, now go, go in hiding. All right, and so, so it is in this time... It is in this time that, that we see Elijah in some, in some hard places in this three and a half years. I, I mean, some really hard places. Uh, you, you would think God used him to give this incredible word. God would have, God would have prospered him. God would have shown him uh, powerful before all the people. But no, God let him go through some hard times. But I believe it was in those hard times that Elijah faced during these times that real intimacy with God was cultivated. And it was in this intimacy that, with God that was cultivated that I believe would allow him a few years later to stand on Mount Carmel and face down the 450 prophets of Baal. It was that intimacy that he created with God, that way that he got close to, with God during this time that would give him strength for these battles that, that were coming later. So let me give you three places, uh, three places where intimacy was cultivated in Elijah's life during this time. First of all, there was this place of isolated pain, this place of isolated pain. Uh, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. These are the, the next verses from the one we just read. Said, leave here, turn eastward and hide in Kirith Ravine, east of the Jordan. Kirith literally means cut off or cut down. Like cut off or cut down. I want you to go hide there. You're going to be cut off and you're going to be cut down. Um, it, you, could, you could basically sense that, that, that God was saying here, Hey, Elijah, I'm going to take you through a season of, of, of breaking you. I'm going to take you through a season of brokenness. I'm going to cut you down. I'm going to humble you during, during this time. Uh, I, I'm going to humble you privately because I want to use you publicly. Right? And uh, this is what Elijah, he was sort of cut off uh, as, as he went, out, uh, went to this Kirith Ravine. Now, this was, this was truly a hard place. He was all by himself. He was all alone. Uh, and, and sometimes, in fact, most of the time when we are in our deepest moments of pain, we do feel this sense of isolation. It's like the, it's like the little bird that was flying and, uh, during, during migration time, and it was, it was just super, super cold. 
And uh, I mean, he could feel it as he was flying. I mean, it must have been, it must have got caught up in Alaska too long as winter was setting in, right? I mean, because he was flying and all of a sudden he could feel the, 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 the ice forming on his, on his uh, wings, sort of like on Tom Brady's arm on Sunday. I mean, it was just cold, <laughs> right? And, uh, and, and I mean, he could just feel it, right? It was, it was, it was cold. He could feel it. And, and he began to sense, I'm not going to make it. I am not going to make it. And so he comes in for a crash landing, he sees this farm, he comes in for a crash landing, he's sitting there, the ice is just covering his body. And he's like, I'm going to freeze to death right here in the middle of Alaska. Who cares that it's the most beautiful place in the world? It's cold, right? And uh, so he's freezing, and then all of a sudden, when he thought that it couldn't get any worse, a cow came over and dumped on him. I mean, just pooped right all over him. So now he's standing there freezing with manure on him. But as he's sitting there for a moment, he's like, wait a minute. This manure is warm. It's thawing me out. It is thawing me out. So what does he begin to do? He begins to chirp and sing. Chirp, 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 chirp. You know, I mean, he's, he's so excited and he's just like, he feels life back in him, right? Well, he's making so much noise that the, that the cat that lived on the farm decided to come over and investigate, saw what was in that pile of manure and just ate him. I mean, killed that bird right there uh, on the spot. Oh, sort of a terrible story, right? But a few things to be learned from it. Um, number one, <laughs> what's that? Yeah. Not, not everyone who drops manure on you is your enemy. <laughs> right? Secondly, not everyone who digs you out is your friend. Um, and lesson number three, when you're in a pile of manure, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Right. And, and for Elijah, like he was truly, he, I don't know where this is going either, to be honest with you. <laughs> Listen, Elijah is in the Kirith Valley. I mean, he is, he, is, he is cut off from everything. But it is in this moment that God is saying, hey, Elijah, I know that it feels you're cut off from the rest of the world, but in this moment, you're going to be still and know that I'm God. You're going to be still and know that I am, I am God. And it was in this time of being cut off of isolated pain that, that God, uh, that, that Elijah began to experience true intimacy with God. A.W. A. Tozer said, It is doubtful that God can bless a man greatly until he has hurt him deeply. Never, when, when you are in a time of isolated pain, Never think that you are necessarily out of the will of God. You might be right where God wants you. Because in that time, you will find yourself drawing closer to God. You will find true intimacy with God being, being developed in your, in your life. Uh, second, second place where intimacy is cultivated in Elijah here is a place where total, dependent, total dependence is needed. 1 Kings 17, verses 4 and 6 says, You will drink from the, book, uh, the brook, and I have ordered that ravens to feed you there. So he did. What the Lord, or so he did what the Lord had told him. He went to Kirith Ravine east of the Jordan and stayed there. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and in the bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Not only was he in this place of totally being cut off and cut down, but he was in a place where he literally had to be totally dependent upon the Lord. Like it reminds me of Israel when they were in the, in the wilderness, right? I mean, it was the Lord providing for them. And, 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 and he didn't just say, hey, here's a sack of groceries for you to eat on the next month. Here's some ramen, you know, and, and it, it, should, it should do you for the, for the next three and a half years. No, it was day by day. day by, it was daily bread, literally, right? That, that he had to depend upon the Lord, that he was going to wake up not knowing where his meal was going to come from, and a raven would come down. A raven would come down and he would be fed by, by a raven. That's just amazing to me. Um, it's like the, the single mom who, who uh, 
every month. She would get close to the end of the month, and there would be more month left than money. And, uh, and so she would pray, Dear God, I need you to provide. I'm out of money, and I need groceries. I need groceries for me and my kids. And she had an atheist next, that lived next door. And, and he would just say, Silly woman, there is no God. There is no God. What, what are you doing? And she would keep praying. And finally, he just said, you know, I'm going to play a little joke on this lady. And so uh, he, he heard her praying once again. And so he went down and bought her some groceries and then went and knocked on her door and then ran. And then peeking around the corner, she, she opened the door and saw the groceries. And she shouted, yes, God, you have provided. You have answered my prayer. And he, being a smart aleck, steps around the corner and says, you fool. God didn't provide that for you. There is no God. I bought those groceries and put them there. So again, the lady exclaimed, thank you, Lord, you have provided. And you used the devil to pay the bill. <laughs> <laughs> These stories, I'm on a roll today with them. Aren't I? Um, yeah, so, so isn't that awesome, though, that that that's how God works, right? I mean, God is our provider. And for Elijah... For Elijah, literally, he had to have a daily dependence upon the Lord. You know, when we are in a time of plenty, and we see this with Israel over and over and over again, when we have everything we need and everything we ever want, we sort of lose this dependency upon God, don't we? And we have this self-reliance. But in a time when, when we know the only way we're going to eat is if God provides, the only way we're going to get through this hard time is if God helps us. In those times, real intimacy with God is cultivated. Let me move on for the sake of time. Uh, the third, the third place is a place of unconditional, where a place where unconditional obedience is required. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him: Go at once to Zareph of Zidon and stay there. Now, we we talked about this story of Elijah leaving there earlier in this in this series. But but here's the reality: God had been providing by this brook been giving them ravens, right, to eat. It, incredible story. No reason at all for this to happen where God says, you know what, I'm going to stop letting the ravens come. I'm going to stop providing by the brook. Now, Elijah could have said, but God, this has been such a, a, such a good plan here. But, but isn't, it, isn't it like the Lord in our life? He never wants us to become dependent upon the blessing or the way that He is blessing us. Uh, and I think that's one of the great dangers for all of us in the, in the faith uh, all of us that are, that are a part of churches, all of us that have been walking this out, is that we begin to expect God to do the same thing that He did yesterday. We begin to expect Him to bless us the same way that He did someone yesterday. We begin to God to provide for us the same way He provided for us yesterday. But God will often lead us from a place that is comfortable. God will often lead us from a place of, of blessing uh, and, and allow the brooks in our life to dry up, right? So that we no longer, so we can see it's not the brook that, that, that really is my source here. The, the brook is not my source. These ravens are not my source because it is so easy to fall in love with the blessings of God, to grow comfortable with the blessings of God, where we begin to say, boy, this brook sure is, sure is treating me well. These ravings sure are a good meal when we forget, you know what, it's God that have provided these. So God reminded Elijah, Elijah, this brook has, has been a source that I have used to feed you, but I'm cutting you off so you will be reminded you need to, to have a sense of obedience unto me and, and unconditional obedience, Elijah. And so he allowed the brook to dry up. And we know that Elijah had to go right into, a, into another land. The Lord told him to go to this widow's house. And, and so funny, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you from a place where you're being fed by raving, ravens and, and being nurtured by this brook. I'm going to allow that to dry up. And you're going to go visit the, the widow who's sort of like the single mom that I talked about who's got more month than money left. And she's going to now be what I use to feed you. Isn't that awesome how God works? But when we are faithful and we're obedient, we'll see that every step that God asks us to take, He honors that step with His, with His provision. Uh, and it's, it's never, it's rarely in a way that we think it should be provided. But it's so much better, right? I know we're out of time, but man, I want you guys to be encouraged today. I want you guys to be encouraged to, to, to cultivate 
to cultivate an intimacy with the Lord. Don't run from the places of isolated pain. Don't run from the places where, where this unconditional obedience is required. Don't, don't, run, don't run from the places where your total dependence is needed. Embrace those moments because those are places where intimacy with our Father are truly cultivated in our life. So embrace them because God is doing something good. Let me pray. God, we love you and we thank you for this day. We ask you to help each of us, Lord, to cultivate a deeper, uh, deeper place of intimacy with you. We love you and thank you for it in your strong name. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great day.